All right. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Good morning from me in London, England. I am very, very excited to be here today with an amazing panel of experts um, on e-commerce in the GTC region. I'm personally very excited because I expect to learn a lot from our panelists today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let each of them in, uh, introduce themselves. So first, we have Malik, who is the country manager of Bahrain um, at Visa. Welcome, Malik. Hi, hi. Uh, nice to see you all. And uh, like you said, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm Malak Astafa. I am the country manager for Bahrain and Visa. I've been with Visa for six years now, and um, we learn uh, as much as you're planning to learn today, Nina, all the time, uh, new things in the payments world and the world of e-commerce. Uh, so really looking forward to being part of this panel with uh, our uh, other ecosystem players. And yeah, thanks for having me. Amazing. Welcome. Um, next, we have Gil Rodriguez, uh, who is the AVP Customer Experience and Design Lead at Pay It. Welcome, Gil. So, um, so yes, uh, to this panel, um, had, um, the, it's a digital uh, wallet called it's for the Bank uh, in the U.S. And I'm happy to share some thoughts around payments and how we're doing with the digital wallets. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for joining us all the way from Brazil today. We're lucky to have you, <laughs> Thank you. with us. <laughs> Thank you very Next, much. Next, we have Tarek, uh, who is the co-founder at Point Checkout. Welcome, Tarek. Tell us a little bit more about you. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Tarek, co-founder of Point Checkout. Uh, Point Checkout is a uh, payment platform to allow users to pay with their loyalty points. So your existing loyalty points today on the market. Uh, imagine being able to use your airline points or your uh, bank credit card points, for example, to buy uh, on your next Uber ride, your next Kareem or order your food um, as well. So it's a platform to enable the spending of loyalty points, which is a big part of alternative payment. And we've seen tremendous growth um, during the pandemic when people are finding that the loyalty points are worth money. Amazing. Thank you for being with us. And last but certainly not least, we have Mo Ali Yusuf, who is the Vice President and Regional Manager at Checkout.com. Welcome, Mo. Tell us a bit more about you and Checkout.com. Thank you so much, Nina, and uh, thank you for having me. Really looking forward to today with so many uh, friends, partners, and other colleagues. I think just quickly on Checkout, uh, Checkout is a global payments company. We have a strong presence here across uh, this part of the world. Um, we, we help our customers like Kareem, Talbot, and, and hundreds of others accept e-commerce payments online through, through a single connection, and we help them derive value out of their payments technologies. Uh, we offer both traditional card payments, and we also support uh, many other alternative payment types, such as benefit pay in Bahrain. Amazing. Well, as you can see, we have an all-star lineup today. I'm very excited to just dive straight in. Um, of course, we have to set the stage. It has been, ah, oh, to use the word, an unprecedented year. <laughs> um, I think we've all heard that word more than we would care to for the rest of our lives, but it's certainly been one for the books, um, but has also been perhaps um, in a way, a bit of a um, galvanizing force for those of us that work in digital payments, um, those of us that work in digital wallets. Um, so it's been perhaps um, an, a nice thing, rather uh, paradoxically for us. And I guess the first thing that I was thinking of um, when presented with this panel was actually writ large, um, I don't actually know in the GTC region, but I'm really curious to know what consumer behavioral trends are giving rise to the rapidly evolving payment methods that we see across the GCC, including the rise of mobile shopping, um, e-com obviously, and the role of e-wallets. Um, of course, we caveat with the fact that coronavirus has given us tremendous growth in this, in this arena, but I'm curious to know your thoughts. Perhaps I'll go to right, you first, start? Alec. 
Oh, oh, there you go. No, go Better. for it. Go, no, for no. It. No, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Just, just really. Uh, the, I, I like the, the the way you said that, and, you know, because it's really that. Um, it, for us, it was a, uh, uh, despite all the negative effect of the the COVID and the situation, we we saw the spike of the adoption of the wallet um, because paid wallet also offers um, uh, remittance so you can send money to your to your home and then at some point uh, in the UAE there was no uh, exchange houses opened um, and the only way mm. you could do it was really uh, using digital channels so yeah that really helped uh, the adoption and, and and obviously not only the talking about the e-commerce but what else you could do um, with your digital wallet of your the way of payment so think about the peer-to-peer -peer, an easy way to send money um, uh, to your friends so yeah i think uh, you know many facts not only the e-commerce itself but obviously yeah i think about the contactless payments and all these things that have to uh that, that grow you know uh, automatically because you had to um, and we were we were part of that. We were, we were player. Uh, digital wallets were part of this ecosystem, and we are we are new in the market. Still, we are about two years and a half, but we saw a, a good a good growth on that. So um, I think digital wallets uh, played a good part, and will play. And and I think uh, pay it and the initiatives that we have. Uh, specifically for the UAE is uh, along with the Clip wallet, which is going to be an ecosystem that will integrate digital wallets and other banks. I think that th this will really help, uh, again, peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, payments, uh, you know, all, all types of payments, and obviously in partnership with other players, um, I'm sure we're going to be a more present. Yeah. That's great to hear. Um, Malik, well, speaking of contact, well. oh, sorry, Tara, oh, go ahead. No, I said I, I wanted to second some of the stuff that uh, Gil was also saying. Uh, uh, one of the key things, uh, the key, key words rather, is actually the willingness of a lot more consumers to try new things, um, regardless whether it's a wallet or it's, um, you know, it's points or gift cards, whichever it happens to be. Um, but, uh, you know, we are seeing more and more even the, the older generation, which a lot of the times you're counting on the new generation uh, to say, OK, they're the more tech savvy. They're the ones <clears throat> that are you know, generally on the phone a lot more um, as well. But um, the, the fact that the people are starting to seek alternate solutions uh, has definitely been a positive effect on the entire ecosystem as well. So, again, whether it's, it's a wallet or paying with all other uh, forms of payments. I don't, sorry, sorry Nina, yeah. I don't think we can hear you. We can't yeah. hear you, Nina. But, oh, are you sorry. On mute? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, would think, you would think a year later we've all been, uh, are, is everyone on mute? Um, but that's like so, classic, right? Uh, uh, someone's on mute. <laughs> classic, yes. Um, Mark, so. Actually, um, Gil mentioned earlier um, the adoption of contactless. Having spoken to Cynthia Lacour yesterday from MasterCard, um, I'm sure you've seen something similar at Visa. And I'm curious for your perspective, um, along with you know e-commerce transactions and everything we've discussed so far. Yes. Yeah, so, if I may, I'm going to take a, a lens back. Right. There's even pre-COVID, we saw a rise in digital payments. Um, that is a main focus for us in the uh, payment scheme world, uh, driving contact lens, driving digital, uh, the agenda of digital globally. Um, we really believe in that. And of course, then with coupled with COVID coming into play, uh, and then cash being this, you know, potential risk factor, um, we saw it exponentially change. We saw regulators and uh, the ecosystem quickly booming to adapt to the needs of what the consumers were looking for. Mm -hmm. So without saying, you know, goes that yes, we were already on trajectory of driving contactless in quite developed markets, but we saw a surge of this in the emerging world as well. Um, and if we take the GCC as an example, we had certain countries that had already seen the establishment of contactless tokenization e commerce. If you take Saudi Arabia and UAE as examples. And then we saw the others coming into play very, very quickly. Um, at the start of the pandemic, Bahrain is an example, classic example where, you know, um, 
the, the central bank really focus this agenda of let's get digital as quickly as possible um, to allow the people uh, the alternative payment methods. Now, the need was there. The scale up happened faster than you ever would have seen previously. Um, mm -hmm. And the adoption follows, right? Because the need is there. Now, the other side of it is, of course, that the consumer and, and what Tarek mentioned, the, the necessity drove the behavior, even in sectors and segments where maybe historically you wouldn't have expected it as much. Um, and what we found through the surveys that we ran recently is more than 50% of people that were new users of e-commerce or digital platforms would now use it going forward. Um, and we expect that to just continue to grow as well. That's so fascinating. And actually, um, to pick up on something Tarek said earlier about the older generation kind of starting to see a shift where typically we think of the younger generation as being much more adaptive, quick to take up new technology. But with the pandemic, we very much have seen the older generation have, have to get on board. And I was, uh, I watched, it was Good Morning Europe and your CEO um, at Checkout.com, Mo, uh, Guillaume, was saying yeah. that there was a sudden uptick in, in the older generation really using um, online purchases, really turning to e -com. So I'm curious from your perspective what you've seen um, from where you sit. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great point. I think there's sort of uh, two things I want to share with everyone. So first is that uh, last week's um, uh, Black, Black you know, Friday and uh, Cyber Monday, uh, there was a huge amount of sales uh, that happened. And because of the fact that people are now uh, working at home, uh, as opposed to the uh, pre previous years when we saw people shopping in morning or shopping at night, we saw people shopping throughout the whole entire day. And uh, because of that, we saw a 250% rise uh, in the amount of uh, in the amount of uh, e-commerce shopping that happened versus the versus the previous year. And I think that the second thing that's that's super uh, insightful, just building on what everybody was saying, was that uh, we recently published our first Mina e-commerce um, uh, report, uh, which which actually shares trends and insights from. Uh, consumers, partners, uh, and many different uh, businesses who are online. And just some of the key findings are so insightful in terms of the, the direction that the direction that online is going. So uh, the first uh, data point I wanted to share with everyone is that uh, uh, we see that online shopping is nearly... Oh. Mo, I think we've lost you, Mo. Oh no, he was about to say something brilliant and undoubtedly as well. I was looking forward uh, to that sentence. <laughs> I, I know, to like, yeah. I think the point. <laughs> we're on the edge of our seats. Well, hopefully we're able to get Mo back. Uh, but uh, his point about people shopping all through the day now, let's hope that our, our employers are not aware of this fact uh, that we are shopping online <laughs> during the day at work. Yeah. Um, Something that I think about often, I think we in the industry um, oftentimes roll out a new payment uh, technology and we think in our bubble, like, this is the best thing ever. Like, everyone is going to love this. They're going to use it. It's going to be so great. Um, but actually, from my own experience, and I was discussing this yesterday with Cynthia, there actually is a long lead up with education oftentimes, right? The need to educate customers. Um, Gil, you mentioned Clip. And I know three weeks ago, you um, you guys over at Pay It um, introduced the QR codes where people could go and pay with the QR codes. And I think there's also an education piece that has to be done there. I know in your role with customer experience um, and, and design, you think a lot about customers. So maybe I'll start with you and ask how you've risen to the challenge of educating your customers on how to use these new um, technologies. Right. Now, that's a brilliant question, Inna, because um, I recall having um, a research, I think it was a year and something ago, uh, and that research was saying that, well, we are using QR codes since the beginning. And they say, well, it's, it's problematic because people do not understand that QR codes are for payments. Uh, and it's like, you know, that discussion about QR codes and so on. And now you see QR codes for the place. It's like for menus or for accesses or for, for anything, right? So it's just like for a matter of, maybe half a year uh, that whole research was to the to the trash 
Um, but yeah, it's definitely a challenge, not only for how to payments, but other functionalities on the app. And I think the best way we, we try to do is, of course, with our marketing team, but uh, trying to create that customer journey there within the context, within the app and within our partners, because we have the, the adoption of our merchants as well, accessing and, and, and um, opening for a new payment. So it's not only on the customer side, but also on the merchant side of how this new payment works, because at the you know at the point of sale sometimes you get that resistance because oh my god another one that i have to learn and then how this thing works and you know yeah. and cashbacks oh you got cashback so how do i apply this so yes it's definitely a challenge um we, so we, we often work with our marketing team to do a, a good propaganda around the new features uh, but a lot mm -hmm. on, on context based. So you do a transaction, you know, what's next? So the tip of the day and stuff like that are really helping us to drive more engagement in the app. Amazing. Amazing. And and speaking of rewards, maybe if I can go to Tarek, I know that at Point Checkout, you guys are doing um, a lot with rewards. And so have you found there to be a challenge in educating the customers? the older generation that you mentioned perhaps um, on how to actually use point checkout, how to um, redeem these rewards. Yeah. I don't want to keep uh, being uh, being the one carrying the flag for the older generation. I'm not part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're definitely a very, very important segment. Uh, they're certainly on over, uh, uh, certainly on a very important segment uh, in, in driving. This. So, I mean, there, there are two key things that we are also uh, you know, seeing. First of all, you know, most certainly the element of, of design and the user experience plays a tremendously important role, certainly for mm. first time users. So uh, again, someone who's tech savvy, who's, you know, opened already a digital bank uh, through the app or has done two, three you know, experiences on third party apps just by seeing the ad and downloading them is completely different than you know, someone who's their first venture. And we see quite a lot of our own users you know, that, that could be paying with points. That would be the first interaction for them in online payments overall uh, because mm -hmm. one of their merchants. So uh, just, you know, taking it a step back. So we enable uh, the clients of reward programs to pay both online and we also have in-person payments as well. So let's say, you know, I'm, I'm collecting points from one of the retailers and their app already tells me I have 10 or $10 worth of, uh, worth of points. That mm -hmm. merchant uh, or rather that, you know, reward program is explaining to them where they can go ahead and spend it. And a lot of those might not at all be, uh, uh, you know, the users who typically shop online. Um, so uh, on one hand, yes, the element of design becomes extremely important to say, okay, if you are to create an account with Point Checkout, link your reward program and go ahead and pay, it should be super easy, very seamless, and to some extent self-explanatory. And one of the mm -hmm. things that we also shifted a little bit during the pandemic um, as well is to work with merchants to get them to send that message to the clients as well. So that part of that mm -hmm. element of the education comes directly from them. One of the things that we utilize and, and uh, as well is using payment links. So um, uh, again, before it used to be, you know, you're shopping on the checkout page, it would tell you pay with points. Uh, and then we enabled, while you know, people are maybe not necessarily shopping online, but more important, a lot of them weren't ready to accept payments online. Uh, so we enabled merchants to send payment links to their clients to say, hey, you want to pay I'll send you a link so that when it's initiated by the merchant, we find that you know the barrier is a little bit easier uh, for a lot of the users to do as well. So the educational part works, element of design, obviously marketing is a big part of it for our users. And we utilize quite a lot of the merchants to also be able to, uh, to work with their clients because they trust them much more than any third party service at, uh, I spoke. Absolutely, and I think, from where I sit um, in my day job, uh, working at Klarna, I know how important merchants are, those partnerships. Malak, I think um, a big part of Visa, and I think people tend to, there's a misconception that Visa, MasterCard, Amex, they're these old rails, you know, you use your card, it's easy. What is there really to think about in terms of new technology? Um, but I often think about Visa being um, very much at the forefront of looking at various new technologies, not just, you know, you being able to use your card, but also those partnerships um, earlier mentioned. So I'm curious on your thoughts um, there. 
Yeah, and, and you rightfully said it, Nina. I think um, our role is has developed so much more from being just the payment credential, which is historically, you know, what these is known as the network. Um, and we view ourselves as an accelerator of everything that the, the gents were talking about, right? These new um, go-to-market solutions, these new checkout experiences that merchants are looking to enable um, for their consumers. So the ways we work with our partners across the ecosystem, whether it's the merchants, whether it's our issuing banks on both sides, is we all know that consumers are now looking for a more seamless uh, experience online, exactly the way they would have had if they're in store, if not better, right? So everything we do is in to, to create that flexibility of payments um, digitally for them. Now, one thing that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of my um, fellow panelists will, will agree, is this card abandonment issue that we see, right? Where you get to the checkout point and then because of the way you need to pay, uh, entering your card details now is actually yeah. a hassle. Historically, yeah. that was like the technology was enabling you to shop online using your card, right? So we've been advocating and working endlessly with our partners to change that experience uh, and keeping it flexible, you know, we keep exploring different ways of doing it. Click to pay is our recent, um, we recently launched it globally, where you can just your, your credentials plus also your um, information is already stored. All you need to do is basically log in and you're able to pay. Um, we've seen tokenization as a technology really boost um, the ability of different uh, token uh, tokenized solutions like apple pay being a payment factor uh, at the checkout mm -hmm. point so all of those different varied experiences are making it faster uh, simpler for the consumer but i do want to take uh, a second to also mention something about the consumer education so one part of it mm -hmm. is allowing consumers the the chance to see points and rewards and loyalty but on the back end consumers also want to make sure that when they're transacting these transactions are safe secure um, and and you know are, are legitimate so that's a big part of the rewards for loyalty platform right also making sure that you're, there's the comfort uh, for your loyal customers that are returning to you so um, at Visa one of our biggest campaigns that we run uh, you know annually is a stay secure and we run this with various governments um, across the world and in the in the GCC region we've recently done it across UAE, Saudi and Kuwait where we educate the consumers on also the safety of paying online so that then enables you to go back to your mm -hmm. favorite merchants and, and continue to pay uh, feeling safe and secure. Absolutely. Um, that's wonderful to hear. I think we were able to get Mo back, which is great. Um, before we move on to our next section, Mo, you had us all on the edge of our seats. You were about to mention this report that you had just released, and we were all very excited to hear what you were going to say. So we, before we move on, I'd love to give you a chance to share what you were going to say. Thanks, Ida. I think uh, just um, uh, apologies for that. I'm not sure when exactly I you know, cut off, so I'll just keep it brief. <laughs> Uh, but basically, uh, Checkout has just released uh, its first MENA e-commerce report, which shares trends and insights from over 5,000 consumers, their region's top merchants and apps, and many of our partners, including Visa. Including Visa. Um, some of the key findings that I think we're really kind of building, building on, uh, on some of the early themes that we're, we're talking about uh, included the fact that online shopping is now universally present. So we found that the majority of the reasons of the region's consumers, almost 90% have embraced online shopping and more than half expect to shop online even more often. Second factor was mm -hmm. trust. Uh, historically in the in this region, um, customers were always a little bit worried to put their card information online to actually make a digital payment online. They, they kind of really preferred to make any kind of transaction using cold, cold hard cash. And we found mm -hmm. that 81% of consumers now trust the safety and security of online payments, su uh, suggesting a meaningful and positive shift in the sentiment towards digital payments. And the third uh, interesting stat was that COVID-19 uh, really has been a silver lining. Uh, we've seen our volumes at checkout almost double uh, in the past year, and we've got over a thousand new inquiries from merchants all across uh, this part of the world. Uh, and so that kind of really shows that uh, very, very quickly, the whole ecosystem is understanding the uh, opportunity and really seeing the shift towards uh, on, on online shopping. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, 
talking about this acceptance, it's wonderful to hear from your report that you know 90% of, of people have tried online shopping now, which is always great. But now, how do we retain these customers and make sure that they come back, right? And this is always such a thing that we, I think, in our industry think about often. Um, so what I think about often is, is it aligning incentives um, to be very academic, but how are you thinking about aligning incentives, um, incentivizing your customers with rewards, um, lifestyle functionality, and real-time payments to not just grow, but also retain your customer base into next year, 2021, but beyond. I thought I would ask Tarek first, as he um, obviously has a lot of experience in rewards. So maybe I will um, let you start, Tarek. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, see, I mean, the, the loyalty payments themselves have not are not new, right? So they've been around for, for quite a lot of time. And also at the same time, the, the earning part, whether you're earning points or stars or miles or you know, whatever it happens to be, um, obviously has been around for a lot. So the pandemic presented quite a huge opportunity to use this, um, let's say, pool of points or rewards um, mm -hmm. to, on one hand, change behavior. Uh, I think this is really, really key as well. It's, it's not so much about rewarding you for buying with me. It's a lot more now about changing the behavior that you're doing. So whether you're buying more often from me or you're only coming to me or, um, you know, it, making you spend more online rather than in store. Uh, and a few examples mm -hmm. that come to mind definitely come from the retail world. Um, one of the more famous, you know, uh, reward programs here is, for example, Sephora, where, you know, mm -hmm. typically, you know, they have quite a very good reward program, even a paid reward program, a monthly reward program. Uh, but one of the first simple things that they allowed you to do when the lockdown pandemics happen, say, oh, now you could use whatever points for to getting free shipping online, just go shop online. It sounds so mm -hmm. simple. And they have, of course, the advantage yeah. of saying, you know, we have the pool, we, we don't need any external factor, if you will. Um, but uh, companies like Starbucks also have, you know, fantastic example in, in this regard, where people no longer used to come physically to Starbucks. Before you're, you know, you're spending uh, at Starbucks, you're buying, and then at the same time, you're, able to collect stars they call them and those stars you mm -hmm. can convert them into a gift card a starbucks gift card that you can only redeem in store that all of a sudden is not available anymore but they also still wanted to drive people to uh, to do it. so they partnered with paypal so you can load your stars into your paypal wallet and still be able to do a digital payment whether it be it online starbucks you cannot buy much stuff online uh, for them as well but that that was quite a, a fruitful partnership to change a lot of the behavior that they have as well um, actually mm -hmm. for digital payments. So now that you have $20 worth of stars in your PayPal wallet, at the store, when the store's opened, tap your, pay, your, your PayPal wallet to be able to pay with those stars. So that mm -hmm. completely shifted behavior to people paying less cash at Starbucks, which is one of the things, the main things that they wanted to achieve uh, as well with this reward program. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the use of this to change behavior uh, is extremely powerful, which is exactly what we are also doing at, uh, and check out to really work with the brands uh, specifically within the banking world as well obviously it's a it's a mm -hmm. nice channel and for us it it's always been surprising how a lot of the reward programs uh, do not properly communicate the value of the points and where people can redeem those points uh, to their users a lot of the VIP users I mean uh, uh, all of us they know some miles or, or points junkie somewhere who's you know always getting the maximum <laughs> But remember that 95% of the users just don't know, just don't know. So we had quite a lot of uh, uh, users, um, you know, upwards, I would say upwards of 1,000 users in the past couple of months, that they're actually linking for the first time. And from their behavior, mm -hmm. you could see that, you know, to some extent, they had no idea that you have 100 there, uh, which is significant. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not small money, uh, so to speak. So, you know, that, that has been uh, uh, key as well. And bringing it back to, to uh, the Starbucks example, I was just reading earlier that, you know, the, the loyalty, the loyal members, their revenue has increased by almost 4% only in, in the last quarter. Um, or the revenue coming from those loyalty members have increased by almost 4%. So, I mean, this is a huge, huge jump while getting your own members to, to actually, you know, utilize digital payments. So it's a very, very powerful tool uh, to use it, to utilize it. And this is really one of the things that we're working with a lot of reward programs to do it. And obviously payment partners as well. 
Fantastic. You know, as an American, I don't know whether to be uh, proud or shocked that <laughs> Starbucks is so loved uh, where you are. But um, thinking kind of beyond this, you know, we touched also on lifestyle changes. And um, Mo, you mentioned when you introduced yourself, um, Checkout's partnership with Kareem, which I think definitely falls into kind of that lifestyle category. If I could be chauffeured around for the rest of my life, I would happily do that. So I'm curious from your your point of view um, at Checkout, how um, you guys are viewing loyalty and rewards, um, if at all. Yeah, look, I, I, uh, I think in general what's happening is that uh, customers really care about having a contextual commerce experience. So they want everything to be digital. They want it to be real time. They want it to be frictionless and they want it to be on, on demand. So whether I want food or I want groceries or if I want a taxi, I, I want everything mm -hmm. to be available directly on my phone and I, and, uh, I want to have it right now. And what customers are starting to do is that they're actually taking their best experiences on their favorite app and there's and then they're now starting to export that into their expectations across every single other app so whether the value to the customer be being having a frictionless easy payment having a very good um, a loyalty program or even being able to walk into a store and do the online shopping directly on the app uh, these are a lot of the kind of trends that we're starting to see across many of our fintech partners merchant partners it's really about giving the the actual consumer, the ability to do a transaction and not think about payment, but then really just think about buying something, a product or service that they want. Excellent, excellent. Now, um, in the interest of time there, I would like to move forward a bit um, and think more broadly as we also have questions we wanna to get to, um, but thinking about the strategies that um, maybe local service providers can be using, using right now to stay ahead of the competition, um, whether that's through loyalty programs, whether that's through new technology, new payment options, cultural nuances. Um, Malak, I thought I'd go to you first because I know Visa definitely has a soft spot for small businesses, um, but also just writ large local service providers. So keen to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so I think um, what we're seeing more commonly now and, and, and you know, our biggest focus was supporting SMEs uh, locally in local markets is that with, with the pandemic, a lot of people being at home, really starting to focus on this shop local shop, um, you know, your own uh, during this time. And what we find is that if you are the fastest mover and adopter, people are more likely to be dri driven towards your um, your business. Uh, to Mo's point, I think a lot of our uh, partners um, are looking at you know enabling the experience and not only um, just buy what you need, but rather we are your first choice and top of mind um, when you are on your phone looking to make your purchase. Um, and, and, and that's the change that we're seeing, right? Your whole lifestyle has gone from leaving your house and seeing things and walking into a store to actually being able to condense all of that into a screen on your on your mobile phone. Um, and we work backwards with some of our partners. We say, actually, to learn more about your, your consumer, you need to digest that data appropriately and work backwards, sort of re-engineering it. Um, so yes, mm -hmm. this is the behavior we're noticing. How can we now build an experience around that to make sure that these um, consumers are returning to, to our businesses. So it's really multifaceted, looking at it from various angles, whether it's a payment, whether it's the loyalty, whether it's the experience, it's all coming down to, you know, being the first mover in that element and making sure that you're addressing all these different factors for your, for your um, consumers. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, going off of that, Gil, I definitely wanted to get your opinion on this because when we talk about cultural nuances, I think, around the world, we've all been trying to adapt very quickly, support local businesses. Um, but I noticed that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, that Abu Dhabi Pay is now available on, on, the, on the Pay Wallet and so that you can pay for government services. Um, and that was really interesting to me because it's perhaps a little uh, less jazzy and exciting as, um, you know, going shopping at, at Sephora or Starbucks, but very integral to your day-to-day -day life. So I'm curious, um, 
at pay it how you are viewing um, this in terms of local services. Yeah, no, I think, Nana, this is a part of uh, really democratizing the, the, the way of paying. Um, so being a digital wallet, and if you really want to be uh, across the board, um, we have to be able to, to be everywhere. I think that's the goal, right? Being accepted mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, and I think the ability to be closer to governments and as first of all, Bank, as we were already providing government services in the past you know, for payments, um, then I think it was a great opportunity to, along with Abu Dhabi Pay, which is an initiative from, from Abu Dhabi, uh, to make payments digital. Um, so that we could really spin off and then explore a bit more. So migrating the cars from Idirham, for example, which is, well, you know, yeah. since long time was just a way to pay. Uh, and, you know, the process of going to a government uh, sector and paying and have to buy the car because that was the only way you could actually, uh, you know, pay that government fee. And then just having it on your wallet and, you know, do your onboarding and, you know, two minutes using your national ID and topping up your wallet and processing a payment. I think it, this is, you know, it's just by, by, by the time you're waiting for your token to be called, I think that's, that's a, you know, a massive change. And it, mm -hmm. it doesn't stop there. So uh, paid has its own um, segments in terms of uh, uh, cards again. So we've got the, we call them Ratibi, which is the low income uh, segment. Uh, and, and for them, just to look at how much they have on their salary card, it's a, and it's a big deal. So if they connect their cards to pay it, they can see it. Um, and, 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 and from there you go. So then all the journey kind of changes. So it's, it's a person that imagine he would take a bus, he, he lives on a, you know, in a camp and, you know, to, to send money home, he would have to pay a bus, stay like 20 minutes, uh, to reach to the, to the exchange house. And now he can just do it, uh, in a tap, uh, by the mm -hmm. app. So it's, it's really a, a game changer. So, and again, democratize the way you can. Uh, pass money from A to B or make a payment. Mm -hmm. So um, we are there to, uh, to to push on that front. So yeah. Amazing. Um, now I want to leave enough time for questions. And one that has come up, um, we've not pre-planned this, so I don't know who is going to go first, but a very pertinent uh, question, especially as we move online, everything is digital, that comes with a lot of data and with data comes the opportunity for artificial intelligence the buzzword if you've got that on your bingo card cross it off um so i'm very curious from your perspectives um what are the powerful ways in which artificial intelligence is uh being used in e-commerce right now and that was a question from mark adams thanks so much for asking that mark i'll let you guys decide who wants to go first <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Want things to be as simple and frictionless as possible. There's definitely concern around ensuring that the transaction uh, is secure, authentic, and really trying to prevent uh, fraud as much as possible. So we have mm -hmm. a machine learning based risk platform that basically evaluates every single transaction. Uh, that's happening in uh, real time and um, uh, and looking at a host of different parameters to basically ensure that this transaction is actually authentic um, uh, as possible. And I think there's a lot of uh, applications of um, uh, machine learning um, uh, um, and all these kinds of things that are really starting to, uh, to sort of come into play that really work in the background that may be invisible mm -hmm. to the actual consumer that's actually making the uh, payment, but uh, but but they really work hard to actually ensure the overall integrity of the uh, payment transaction. Definitely, I think Malik, I, I wanted to get your opinion on this because I know this year alone, Visa has been doing a lot with AI, um, whether to prevent fraud or even um, to make sure that there's no false positives with um, declining transactions and even with um, underwriting for credit. So I'm curious um, if you have anything to add. 
Yeah, no, so uh, exactly what, what Mo um, was alluding to, uh, similarly at Visa, what, you know, we are constantly working um, with our partners and ensuring that every transaction that's being made is a legitimate transaction. We, you know, we, we value the power of our network in being able to, to to drive these um, checks and security measures. But we also partner really closely with governments because one of the biggest trends that we've seen um, as the world of smartphones develops is also social commerce um, and the rise of social media when it comes to in-app purchasing. Mm -hmm. So this is something where we really have started to focus on how can we, um, you know, whether it's create or come up with or you know together think around the social impact uh, social commerce impact that's out there as well so i think that's um an area that we've not really touched upon but it's really becoming a huge trend um when you look at apps such as instagram that now have an in-app purchase so you're not only looking at one factor anymore you're looking at many factors across um the experience of, of making sure that you know, the consumer is protected. It's no longer just your credential that needs to be secure, but your whole experience. Um, and that's something that I think um, it's, it's still a work in progress. Uh, it's still a discussion that we see across uh, with our partners and regulators in terms of how can we protect consumers um, when they are now having many, many more ways of, of purchasing online. That's great to hear. I am, uh, I'm always shocked by how accurate the Instagram algorithm is at, uh, at choosing what I should buy next. It's, it's a little bit scary, actually. Exactly. Um, one, of the yeah. other, one of the other questions we have is, um, how do personalized loyalty programs improve shopping experience? Um, so uh, anyone, Tarek, perhaps you maybe you'd like to start? It's a Tarek question. It's a Tarek <laughs> question. Tarek, how, how is personalized loyalty um, changing shopping experiences? I think you're in oh, mute. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tarek, are you with us? Can you hear us? I think you're muted or frozen. <laughs> no, it's not frozen. Okay. Any other thoughts while we wait for Tarek to rejoin us um, or become audible on um, personalized loyalty? Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, well, this is a shame. Um, all right. Well, conscious of we still can't hear you. Oh no. Okay. Um, well, conscious of time, I'm just going to throw it to the last, um, most perhaps controversial, depending on who you speak to, um, this question of what are your views on using cryptocurrencies in e-commerce? Um, yes. and someone I'm specifically asked, Oh, uh -huh. we've got Tarka. Please go ahead. Tarka. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I missed the question. <laughs> uh, the Sorry question was um, how how is personalized loyalty programs changing shopping experience yeah so uh actually i mean this is uh, uh this is one of the key things that we are seeing is making uh, a bit of a difference uh there are three things when you look at personalization first of all making sure that the uh um the redemption options are personal to the user Second of all, using mm -hmm. their existing behavior to give them relevant rewards. Um, mm -hmm. And third of all, helping them drive, if you will, behavior that is important and uh, personal to them, right, on the earning side as well. So um, personalization is extremely key, and a lot of reward programs tend to, I don't want to say ignore it, but tend to generalize that reward, saying, hey, this is a store, this is a portfolio for absolutely everything. Um, but mm -hmm. what we are doing and what we found have, have been no, tremendously important is actually using the payments data or the uh, let's just call it the uh, redemption data to come back and personalize either the next earning behavior or the actual next redemption behavior. so um, 
within the loyalty programs, redemptions drive more transactions with the same uh, program or with the same merchant overall, whether it's more transactions on the credit card or whether it's buying back. But these are the three mm -hmm. key things of how you can personalize it as well. Look at the entire chain of personalizing it. And for us, we've, um, again, in the last couple of months, first of all, not only because people realize they have more money in their uh, loyalty mm -hmm. program, so because we enable uh, personalize, uh, again, ordering food with your points, paying for your gas uh, with your points, and definitely buying on usually merchants that are not directly related to you know, the POS terminal or uh, the actual reward program, especially if it's the banking world, we've seen almost a 10x increase in people spending more and spending in their points. So look at the entire chain and really look at mm -hmm. how they're spending so that the rewards are relevant to them. And that's exactly what we do. Great. I love that relevance. I don't need, uh, you know, a, an offer for me to go get new brogues. I need an offer to get new Jimmy Choo's. Um, so maybe going yeah. back to that earlier question about uh, cryptocurrencies, Mo, it was directed specifically at you, uh, one of the questions. So I'll let you start on where you think cryptocurrencies uh, sit in the world of e-commerce. It's directed towards me. Cool. Yes. Look, uh, I think that in general, our viewer check out is that um, we want to support as many different payment methods that are local and relevant to the actual consumer, which is going to help the merchant drive conversion rates, right? So uh, even mm -hmm. though checkouts live in about 30 different countries, we've been here in the region since 2014. We support not only kind of the major card schemes, but we also support a lot of the domestic payment methods, um, uh, benefit pay, Madan, Saudi, Knet, um, uh, et cetera. If, if there's a specific cryptocurrency that, uh, that really is showing a lot of demand from both merchants and consumers, then that's something that we can definitely consider. Uh, typically, uh, Bitcoin, I'm sure everyone knows the story about how the uh, first transaction was done to buy a pizza, which you know now would be worth millions of dollars. So I'm, I'm sure that uh, <laughs> the guy who bought that first pizza using his Bitcoin really has thought, probably thought about that a lot. So I think uh, <laughs> there's still a lot of uh, questions around whether crypto cryptocurrency is actually a currency or if it's not a currency. Um, there's also a, different, a lot of different um, uh, altcoins. And there's so many different coins that are out there. Um, we've yet to see uh, a specific coin that's really kind of uh, taken off in, uh, in terms of being used uh, for, you know, uh, transactions. But the fact that many other uh, payments leaders such as uh, PayPal um, and Square, etc., are, are are really starting to support uh, Bitcoin and crypto. I think it's something that we're going to closely watch and kind of see how this uh, evolves over time. Wonderful. Well, in the interest of time, I'm going to leave it on that positive future gazing note. Um, panelists, thank you so much for joining to me today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Um, Malak, if our audience would like to know more about what you're up to at Visa, where can they find out more? Uh, I mean, please look me up. You can always reach out to me if you want to know more about what we're doing. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's uh, plenty of ways to reach me. So feel free to look me up on LinkedIn, connect with me through the app. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you've got about what's happening at Visa. Amazing. Thank you. And Gil, where can our uh, audience find out more about you, more about Pay and the work that you're doing? Amazing. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks for, for having me and for all the panelists. So yeah, you want to uh, contact me, please feel free to um, add me on LinkedIn um, for pay it. Please go and pay it. .ae to know more about what we're doing. Uh, we do have a pioneer program, which is really cool. If you want to you know, participate in our uh, user testing and UX uh, workshops, uh, feel free and sign up over there. And then I'm happy to share some thoughts around digital wallets, coffee or motorcycle, classic cars, <laughs> all for it. Amazing. Thank you so much for getting up early and joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, obrigado. Um, Tarek, obrigado. where can, <laughs> where can yeah. our um, audience find out more about you and Point Checkout? Yeah, so pointcheckout.com is our... Uh... <clears throat> Excuse me. Pointcheckout.com is our domain name. Uh, I'm also obviously available on, on uh, LinkedIn. Please get in touch. Today we are live in uh, in Jordan, in UAE, and about to launch two uh, new key markets also coming up in the GCC as well. So 
please reach out if you're a merchant want to accept points or a reward program that want to have your points being spent on our merchant. Wonderful. And you and I can meet up for a Starbucks one day. And last but certainly not Pay least, points at Starbucks. Yes, we'll we'll redeem our stars at Starbucks together. Uh, <laughs> last but certainly not least, Mo, um, thank you again for joining us. Uh, where can our audience find out more about you or checkout.com? Yeah, uh, first I think thank you to Nina and everyone else on the call. Uh, super uh, insightful talk uh, this afternoon. Uh, obviously, you can find us on checkout.com. Uh, our, our report is up there as well. I highly encourage everyone to go and uh, um, uh, download that and check it out. Uh, I'm also very active on LinkedIn and Twitter, and I'm usually in, in a Starbucks somewhere across um, our GCC, so welcome anyone to have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you so much, panelists. And I hope we get to meet in real life next year um, at the next ePay Summit. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.